You are there guys, this is Dale and this is a review of the Nerf Elite Strife. Now the Strife is a semi-automatic, battery powered, magazine fed blaster. I've owned this for a good couple of weeks now, I've put a lot of rounds through it in that time, so it's really let me get to know how it works, what its quirks are, and most importantly I've given it a chance to break. And so with that in mind, on with the review. The original Strife came out way back in 2013, sporting the original blue Elite colours. It's had numerous repaints over the years, including the orange version seen here, the white modulus one which came with both the barrel cap and a foregrip, and there's also a rumoured update to the blue one currently in the works which has the barrel cap, foregrip, a 10 round curved mag and a short stock. I purchased this off the entertainer for 20 quid, um, no special offers on at the time or now unfortunately, but that was the cheapest price I could find it for. So let's go over some of the features of the blaster then, starting right at the back with a stock attachment point. Now this is of course compatible with any end strike stocks, they just clip on into place nicely, very firm, very secure, no problems with that. Onto the pistol grip, I think personally it's a little bit undersized and it's weird because it's not the front bit that's the problem, it's because you have this sling point at the bottom, it kind of cuts into the grip a little bit and it just leaves this part of your palm just hanging in midair. so it makes it feel a lot more cramped than it actually is, so not the most comfortable one in the world. Uh, as this is a battery powered gun, you have two triggers. You have the main trigger up here, which is for feeding darts through the gun, and you have the secondary, the rev trigger, down here. This is the one that gets the flywheels going in the first place. Now, it should be noted that the main trigger is disabled unless the rev trigger is being pulled first. Uh, just make sure you give the gun a second or two just to rev up those flywheels first, though, because if you just start pulling the trigger the instant you've hold down the rev one, then the darts are either going to just jam in the gun or they'll just flop out the barrel, so not particularly good. Just give it some time to rev up first. Um, the trigger pull itself is actually really quite sluggish, um, because it's a mechanical one, it's literally moving a feeder through there that's just pushing the darts into the flywheels. You really feel it while it's done that, it's got about an inch worth of trigger travel and it just feels very, yeah, it's not nearly as crisp as some of the uh, spring guns. Going forward you have the mag release team release, located just in front of the rev trigger here, so you press that, that allows you to eject the included six round mag. Now, as you can see, it's transparent on one side, which is quite cool for when you're loading your darts in, but I think it's a little bit redundant once it's actually in the gun itself, because you can't see any of the darts anyway, but, oh well, cool I guess. Um, should be noted as well that with the mag ejected, the rev trigger will not work, so you need to make sure the mag is inserted, and then the rev trigger is good to go again. Uh, going forward, you have the first of two attachment rails, one on the bottom here, one on the top. These are, of course, compatible with any end strike attachments, they just slide on nicely. Apart from the top one, a little bit of a niggle with that, uh, there's a little lip on the jamming door here that some of the sights are catching on, so you kind of have to wedge them in at an angle sort of thing. It still works, but uh, just not as refined as it could have been. Uh, going forward to the jam door itself, now when you open this up this provides you ample room to clear any blockages you might have, so say a dart gets stuck in there, you open that up, that allows you to clear it out. Uh, should be noted that once this is open, it again disables the rev trigger, so you need to make sure that's pressed and clicked into place, and then the rev trigger is good to go again. Moving forward, you have the second sling point just at the front here, and right at the front is the barrel attachment point. So any end strike barrels will just go onto this nicely, go on, twist, locked. So very nice with that. You've got a lot of different rooms for attaching on this little gun. Um, so what about performance then? Well, this gun is extremely easy to jam if you're trying to do it. Um, if you just not hold the rev trigger enough and then press the main one as quickly as you can, the flywheels aren't going to have enough chance to speed up, so the darts are just going to flop out the gun or they'll get jammed inside it. So it's very easy to jam this if you're trying to do it. You just need to give those re um, flywheels a second or two just to rev up before pulling the main trigger. On the subject of that as well, you get significant FPS drops if you try and beast this trigger as quickly as you can, even if you start at max velocity. Um, this is because the motors don't have enough power in them to get back up to speed before the next dart goes through, and that effect is cumulative, so you get reduced FPS with every dart if you just try and pull this trigger as quick as possible, which kind of negates the whole semi-automatic thing in my eye. Um, especially when you compare it to a spring gun that has slam fire because they fire at max FPS all the time. This needs a bit of time to get up to that, so you're not really going any faster than a slam fire blaster, in my opinion. Um, I do quite like the overall design of the shell, though. It's very compact. You've got quite a lot of firepower for a very small pistol-sized shell, actually. Um, one thing I did notice about it, though, is it's not entirely symmetrical, especially when you look down this side here. The right side sticks out a little bit more than the left, now that's mainly due to the flywheel cage and the battery compartment, but why not just make the left a bit bigger to compensate for that? Uh, on the subject of the battery door, it's located just here on the right. It's locked in with a single Phillips head screw here, and you need four AA batteries in order to power this. The gun will not work without those. Um, 
Another little detail is the fact that this little white thing has actually been painted on both sides. Yeah, you can actually do it when you try Nerf. It's not that hard. Who'd have thunk it? On to the firing demo then. I'm firing at a distance of 25 feet exactly, which is about 7.5 meters, and shooting standard elite darts. I've now swapped the ammo out for some third party darts with hard tipped heads. Whilst they are more accurate, I found that they struggle to go through the flywheel sometimes, as the dart head doesn't compress like a normal nerf brand dart. So ultimately then, what do I think about the Strife? Yeah, I think it's okay. It's not amazing, however. Um, the fact that this is most nerfers go to guns is not to do with how it performs out of the box. Out of the box, I think the motors are a bit too sluggish, they don't have enough power, so it's not a true consistent semi-automatic in my eyes. The fact that you need to wait a little bit to get it back up to max FPS means that it's not properly semi-automatic. There is a delay time. And because of that, I think something like a spring blaster with slam fire, such as an Alpha Trooper, would be a better buy in my idea, because it does need batteries to run, it's slam fire so it fires quicker and at max velocity, and it even has a higher capacity mag included as standard. That is my opinion on the Strife out of the box, however. Where this really comes into its own is in the modding scene. Now, this is the go-to for many, many reasons. Mostly because it's such a small, compact size, but the things you can do to this are endless. Removing the mechanical locks, incre increasing the battery source, so more powerful batteries, wiring it to LiPos even, improved motor cages exist. I've even seen a kit that um, converts this from a mechanical semi-automatic to a fly-by-wire semi, burst fire and full auto mode. That is definitely something that exists out there, and that's just internals. If you want externals, there are plenty of 3D printed kits that exist for this that can cosmetically turn it into an AK, an M4, a Scorpion Evo, a Chris Vector. Just have a quick gander online and you'll be amazed at the kind of things that exist that turns this into looking like a completely different package. So, do I recommend it in its boxed form? Eh, it's alright. It's not bad. It does what it sets out to do. That's okay. I think there are better things out of the box than the Strife, however. But, if you are something that, uh, if you're looking for a gun to mod, to improve upon, then this is the absolute go-to for that. The sky's the limit with this. The only things that are limiting you are your time, your efforts, and how much money you're willing to sink into the thing. Now, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Nerf Strife. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me or feedback you'd like to give, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale.